hi everyone. So it's a pleasure uh, to be presenting uh, today and it's a pleasure uh, for us to present the results of, uh, of this study. Uh, I, I probably should say uh, as an introductory remark a couple of words about this study and about the working group. The idea uh, to conduct the comprehensive study of the court practice relating to uh, in recognition and enforcement of uh, international arbitral awards uh, appeared uh, probably several years ago and a working group within the association was uh, was established uh, approximately 18 months ago. So uh, a lot of law firms and a lot of lawyers participated in the work of this uh, of this group and uh, we will very briefly uh, mention them uh, in the end of our presentation but uh, although the mention will be brief uh, our gratitude to them is huge because uh, uh, they had to, thanks to them, we, we, are, we were able to review dozens of thousands of uh, various cases. Their procedure for research uh, was very, very uh, uh, difficult, I, I would say. And we'll talk about the methodology uh, in a couple of uh, minutes. Uh, I should say that uh, but the 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 task of this research uh, was to to be as comprehensive as possible. So that's that's quite simple because we know that there there had been uh, previously the attempts to conduct the research of the court practice, uh, focusing on the particular. Uh, periods of time, but uh, it has never been done uh, comprehensively to cover basically all available information starting from 2006 until 2020, so basically covering 15 years. Um, uh, again, uh, can you please uh, switch to next slide, please? Yes, so that's the couple of words about the methodology. Uh, uh, well, we sought to collect basically as much information as possible. Uh, obviously, uh, we will not present all information that we collected today. So uh, you will see the key findings of the research and hopefully we will be able to produce some further uh, analysis uh, in future. Uh, although we reviewed really uh, dozens of thousands of cases, dozens of thousands of various court decisions, uh, we distilled that research uh, into 600 of cases cases uh, from 2006 to 2020. Uh, these are basically only the cases related to recognition enforcement proceedings, so they do not include the uh, cases relating to setting aside, they do not include uh, interim measures in support of arbitration and so on. Uh, and secondly, uh, the this case, this 600 cases do not include the uh, applications that were not considered and decided on the merits. Uh, Th th this means that where the applications were returned to some procedural deficiencies, they are not counted in these particular statistics. So although we, we did gather information on them, uh, this will be subject to a separate analysis, which again, we will present later. Uh, and a final comment from my side on the methodology is that uh, these cases, uh, for, for each case, we uh, took, we, we analyzed and we basically uh, noted the last available uh, and final decision. So uh, uh, the, when we say 600 cases, this means the 600 proceedings from the very start to the very end and not just 600 of uh, court orders that could have been appealed, reversed uh, and so on and so forth. So I now pass the floor to Alexi to continue with the methodology and with the first findings of our study. Yeah, thank you very much, Sergei. Uh, could you please have the next slide on the screen? Yeah, so um, to wrap up and to add some details regarding our uh, methodology, how we basically conducted this study. Uh, so 
the information we took uh, from uh, the public register, as many of you know, in Ukraine, most of court decisions are available through a public court register. So what we basically did was searching the register for all cases on recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. Uh, to ensure the quality of our research, uh, we developed at the very beginning some standard search terms to make sure that we have uh, the widest variety of cases um, got into our data set. And then we uh, divided uh, the search by periods, which were conducted by separate law firms. After the initial search, we uh, made a cross check of quality of research where the other firm, not the firm which was making the first search, made an additional search to make sure that most of the cases or ideally all of the cases are uh, in, the, in our data set. And after, uh, we uh, reviewed all the cases from all the periods and combined them into the uh, one table, uh, Excel file, which contained all the cases. So we did our best to uh, make this research uh, as good as possible, but of course there could be some uh, mistakes because it was information from public registers collected by humans and humans make mistakes. But we believe that still uh, we get quite representative picture of Ukrainian court cases because indeed 600 cases is quite a lot even for such a long uh, period. Uh, another caveat which uh, we would like you to keep in mind is that uh, Ukrainian courts may be quite economical when um, uh, writing their judgments. And uh, in our data set, we collected, try to collect quite a lot of data. So uh, if possible, we try to uh, collect data about applicable arbitration rules, the seat of arbitration, uh, law of the contracts, law of the arbitration agreement, if possible, the types of claims made, the uh, arbitrators and the number of arbitrators, dates when the arbitral proceedings were commenced and so on and so forth. However, uh, not in every case does the court mention all these details uh, in its judgment. Uh, so uh, this is something that also must be kept kept in mind. And the final point is that um, an, another uh, issue of interest for us was to consider to refuse recognition and enforcement were uh, most often invo invoked by parties and uh, taken into account by Ukrainian courts. And once again, it's not always very easy to articulate which particular grounds were invoked from the description descriptions in the court judgments. And uh, the reasoning of the courts may at times be not um, cl clearly articulated between different grounds. But once again, in most of the cases, we found we were able to make this and to get this addi additional data. So uh, with this few words about the methodology of our research, let's go to uh, the statistics, the data we uh, have found from... Could you please go to the next slide? Thank you. So uh, the first thing we would like to share with you is the uh, number of cases that were decided in each year from 2006 to 2020. You will mention that in this and in further slides, we take together years 2006 to 2009, because in that period, the court register didn't work quite well. And uh, the courts were quite uh, inaccurate and did not uh, enter their decisions into the uh, register as regularly as they do it now. So we combine these years. But uh, in any event, this graph shows a steady dynamic of growth of the number of cases, which were decided each year. Uh, as you'll see in 2020, uh, more than 80 cases were decided, which were uh, approximately 30% more than in uh, 2019. So we believe that this is a good trend. 
the only thing uh, we would also need to consider when looking at this graph is that uh, in 2020, we took uh, decisions that were final as of 2020. So for instance, if we had a decision by the court of first instance, which was not yet appealed, we entered it into our table. However, it is possible that this decision would be appealed in 2021. And then the final decision, the decision of the Court of Appeal would be uh, in the statistics for 2021. So this may explain um, the steep difference between 2019 and 2012, but we believe it still doesn't um, negate the fact that there is a trend for more cases being decided each year. Uh, could we please now go to the next slide? Thank you. Yeah, it, uh, th this is basically was one of our main ideas and main goal uh, behind this research. We wanted to see uh, how often Ukrainian courts do recognize and enforce arbitral awards uh, fully or partially, and uh, how often the uh, recognition and enforcement was refused by Ukrainian courts. So the statistics was quite good. And we believe that um, th this is an evidence of uh, pro-arbitration bias of Ukrainian courts, because uh, in each year from 2006, more than 80% of cases were, um, in, in more than 80% of cases, the arbitral awards were recognized and enforced uh, partially or in full. Uh, and for instance, in 2019, uh, more than 93% of cases um, got the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. Uh, one word about the, 2000, the statistics for 2020, uh, because it may seem surprising that um, more cases were uh, recognized, in more cases, awards were recognized and enforced in 2019 than in 2020. But we do not believe that this is a trend of uh, Ukrainian courts uh, getting less pro arbitration. Uh, it is sooner the fact that in 2020, there were quite a lot of cases which dealt uh, with um, decisions in which uh, sanctions adopted by Ukraine against uh, the Russian Federation uh, went into play. And uh, these cases, there were quite a lot of them. In, in, it, the, in them, the recognition and enforcement um, was refused based on public, public policy reasons and sanctions. So this may, um, um, this may make a difference in, in, in this particular statistics. And another, another thing is that, as I have previously told, uh, some of the cases uh, that are in our data set for 2020 may yet be appealed and the courts of appeal, the court of appeal, uh, may overrule the decision dismissing recognition enforcement and, um, actually recognize and enforce those awards. So, uh, the statistics for 2020 are not as bad as they uh, may seem. Sir Heap, no. Yeah, next you. slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes. So uh, basically, the second most important uh, aspect that we wanted to study in this research, uh, together with the rate of recognition, was the duration of cases. Because uh, to, 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 to say frankly, uh, I was quite uh, sure that uh, in all years uh, within our research window, we had more or less good uh, statistics as to the recognition rate, and this proved true. Uh, but I really did not have uh, any understanding as to the average duration of the proceedings. And this is basically one of the most frequent questions that we as practitioners get. So how long it's going to take uh, if, we have, if, if we are going to enforce the uh, arbitration award in Ukraine. And basically here is the answer. So uh, here we have the annual statistics uh, uh, in days, uh, how long the average recognition proceeding would last. So for example, the cases decided in 2011, where the final decision was rendered in 2011, the average duration of proceeding was just 187 days. So 
approximately half a year. Uh, and you also see that from 2011 to 2019, the duration was growing gradually but steadily. And in uh, 2019, it was already 395 days, which is approximately one year and three months. And again, uh, I should remind you that this is the average which combines in itself both basically both extremes, both the cases that were uh, not contested and opposed at all and could be decided very quickly by the local court within a month or two, and cases that were heavily contested and basically that uh, ran through several rounds of review uh, and uh, the, uh, the, 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 those proceedings took much, much uh, longer. However, again, as an, as an average uh, indicator, uh, based on quite significant amount of data, we believe that this uh, this graph does represent uh, does provide a general understanding of how how long the uh the the the, the proceeding uh, the recognition proceeding could take in ukraine uh and uh, Taking into account that this is an average, we also wanted to show you some uh, extremes and uh, they are on the next slide, please. So here we have the record breaking cases. Uh, and uh, as you may see, uh, we had 30 cases that uh, lasted more than three years, uh, 12 cases that lasted more than four years. And uh, the most record breaking are the cases that lasted more than six years. We have three of them and just one case that was absolutely crazy and lasted more than nine years. Uh, again, uh, you will appreciate that we are talking here about small portion of cases as compared to the overall amount, approximately uh, 600 cases. So this is rather an exception, but we wanted to show you how bad such exception could be. Uh, Importantly, all these cases, all these record-breaking cases, they were commenced uh, prior to the arbitration reform of 2017. Uh, and this is another aspect which we wanted, really wanted to research what was the impact of the uh, arbitration reform of 2017. And uh, uh, from, from, from the previous slide, you could have uh, uh, could get an impression that the arbitration reform did not uh, significantly impact on the duration of the proceedings because in uh, 2018, 19, and 20, uh, the duration was still very high, basically the highest uh, in, uh, in, in, in our research window. Uh, however, this, uh, this statistics does not reflect correctly the impact of the reform and uh, uh, to, to reflect it correctly, uh, uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah, so here, uh, why the the average statistic does not correctly uh, show the impact of the uh, of the reform, because uh, in cases decided since 2018, uh, those cases include both uh, proceedings that were commenced under the old rules and commenced after the uh, after the reform. So if we took them, uh, if we separate these two categories, we have a very different statistics. So this is the first graph on this slide. So if we take into account all applications decided uh, since 2018, the average duration will be over a year. And if we take only the applications that were filed uh, after to, since 2018, that is under the new procedure, the duration will be almost twice less, which is very significant. Uh, and another interesting statistics uh, is on the second graph of this slide. Uh, here we took the contested cases, uh, which means that we took the cases that were appealed and thus excluded the most simple case, if we can say so, where basically no one opposed the recognition and enforcement. So this graph basically answers the, the question, if we, if, uh, if, 
if I want to have my award enforced in Ukraine, and I know that uh, the respondent will contest such uh, recognition enforcement, how long will it take? And again, the statistics is quite telling here because uh, the applications that were filed before 2568 days and in the for the applications filed since 2018 the duration the average duration is almost twice less so the impact of the of the reform is uh, quite significant i would say uh, on the duration and uh, next slide please uh, I can't say that the impact is significant in terms of recognition rate, and uh, this was also, uh, I, I think, clear from uh, uh, Alexei's graph, because uh, uh, as you see on this on this slide, the rate of recognition before 2018 and after 2018, the average rate, I mean, uh, remains virtually. Uh, identical so it's around 90% uh, of cases are recognized both before 2018 and after 2018. Alexei the floor is yours now. Yeah. Next slide please. Yeah so another thing which was very interesting for us naturally was to understand which arbitration rules are most popular uh, among people who, businessmen who come to uh, recognize and for their awards in Ukraine would go to uh, the combined second place, uh, would go to international arbitration court and international commercial arbitration court from Belarus and Russia, respectively, which uh, together had around 15%. Um, when viewed combined, ICC, SCC, LCA, uh, Vienna International Arbitration Court, GAFTA and FOSFA, so to say Western arbitration centers, together account for around 10% of uh, all awards. And the other uh, arbitration institutions, which included a wide range of centers from uh, Middle East, China, Eastern Europe, and so on and so forth, uh, accounted for uh, around 20%. So uh, this was uh, not something unexpected, but it is interesting to see which arbitration centers are most popular among Ukrainian users. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and we also uh, were interested to see out of all cases in which recognition and enforcement of an arbitral award is refused, um, which uh, what is the distribution between different among different arbitration rules? So here we see that uh, once again, Ukrainian uh, for Ukrainian International Commercial Arbitration Court, the uh, rate is twenty three percent, which is in fact quite good because for an institution which amounts for 56% uh, of all cases, the uh, negative rate of 26% is uh, quite good, I believe. Uh, but the leadership is perhaps with, uh, once again, combined Russian International Commercial Arbitration Court and Belarus International Arbitration Court. Unfortunately, there is a typo here on, on the slide, it's actually International Arbitration Court, uh, which uh, together amount for 35%. And with Russian International Commercial Arbitration Court, this uh, might, be, might be a trend which would only um, rise in future because I, as i have previously told the public policy uh, exception applying to sanctions uh, ukrainian sanctions against russian federation uh, make a good argument for award debtors to refuse uh, recognition and enforcement uh, then we have uh, stockholm chamber of commerce which uh, amounts for 10 percent of unrecognized cases uh, Perhaps there were quite a lot of uh, emergency arbitrator uh, awards which contributed uh, to this particular trend. And uh, GAFTA FOSFA and, uh, amounted for another 5%. All other, for all other institutions, the rate was less than 5%. Uh, please, next slide. 
Yeah, and the, the final uh, data set, the final statistics we would like to share today is also very interesting. Uh, we wanted to understand which grounds for uh, refusing recognition and enforcement under Article 5 of the New York Convention were most often invoked by debtors under arbitral awards and uh, which of them were were eventually upheld by Ukrainian courts. And perhaps it was not, once again, surprising for us. It was something we understood from our, our political experience that uh, the grounds under Article 5.1b and 5.2b, uh, namely failure to notify about the dispute and public policy exceptions, were most um, most common and were invoked most often. And the least popular was uh, Article 2, uh, 5.2a, the concept of arbitrability. Perhaps for many award debtors and for Ukrainian courts, the concept of arbitrability is still too complicated to crunch. Perhaps that's why it was not used uh, so often. Uh, but what is interesting on this slide is that uh, all of these grounds, even those which were invoked most often, actually uh, play out in favor of award that is quite rare uh, enforcement, which is uh, quite a uh, low rate of below uh, 15%. The same goes for uh, the public policy exception. And if we account for the situation with Russian sanctions I have described earlier, the success rate is even lower. And generally, if we compare all the figures, we see that for each ground for recognition and enforcement, the success rate, the probability of court actually upholding this ground is less than 15%. So it's quite encouraging. And uh, you can actually tell your client that even if the debtor raises any of the grounds under the New York Convention, the chances that this ground would be upheld by, upheld by Ukrainian courts uh, are below 15%, which is an encouraging thing to say. Sir, hey, please. Yeah, next slide, please. Just a couple of words. So that basically concludes our presentation of the of the findings. And uh, in future, we plan to uh, to prepare and publish a more detailed report uh, based on on the information we collected. And also, quite importantly, uh, we plan to continue research in further years. Uh, uh, and I trust with a particular emphasis on the uh, on the practice of the Kiev Appellate Court and separate of the Supreme Court. So now it is possible to, to monitor them very precisely and uh, very, very, very specifically. Uh, and finally, uh, the concluding, uh, several concluding remarks is, uh, as I promised in the beginning, uh, words of gratitude to the firms and uh, people who participated in the research. And next slide, please. Uh, uh, here we have the firms, Ukrainian firms, who uh, were kind enough to participate a, a, in the research and provided enormous support to us and to whom we are very much grateful. And on the next slide, please, uh, we have the participants, basically, uh, who uh, who conducted the research, prepared, uh, uh, reviewed the court register, prepared the data set, analyzed them, and so on and so forth. And again, we are very much grateful to them for this. Uh, that's it. I think this concludes our special presentation. Uh, thanks, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, I, I see that there are no, no questions in the chat. Just some words to do from us too. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, another thank you. Uh, so yeah, I think this, if there are no further questions, this concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergei, for co-presenting and see you further during this conference.